Well, good morning. Start of another build day. Building a GC. Also known as the GZW. When you open up the box, you'll have to remove the uh, wheel, seat, basket. My should be wrapped in paper or bubble wrap. The fender, the battery guard, which is back by the uh, end of the bike. It's not on its stand yet. And then, very carefully, remove the headlamp assembly and the rear plastic for it. And it's down here by the forks. So you have to pull all that out before you can pull the bike out. Probably easier just to slice the side of the box and then very gingerly pull it out, put it on its rear stand. And then you can go ahead and start addressing so maybe a few scratches, dings, but nothing major. And uh, that's the start of the build of the bike. Handlebar assembly. I'm going to put it the gooseneck in the box right here. You can get that tightened down later. So basically you need to put the front fender on, the wheel, battery guard for the battery box, lock the battery box to the frame if it isn't already. Put the pedals on, put the steering column in, adjust it to the height you need, align it with the front wheel, tighten that down, put the rear plastic on, and the top plastic with the headlamp on it. Then you can put the seat on first, then you put the rack on, which is much easier that way. And then go through and check all your nuts, bolts, and fasteners. And then finally, put your rear license plate on, change your turn signal headlights and all that fun stuff, motor. Put your basket on. Usually your keys are attached to the frame. Sometimes they're attached to the rear grille. But they're in the box. Two hubs, two keys. And we'll cover how that works once I get the bike assembled. Now well, I can see right off the bat, we got a loose wire. You have to check the harness. There's only two plugs on here. You need to plug in. The rest is it's goof proof. There's only a four pin and a cup and a two pin and a two pin for the ignition switch. So it should be pretty straightforward. That looks like a ground wire. That goes to the ignition switch. There's beeper, buzzer. Zip tie to the frame right there so it doesn't rattle around inside. Notice I'm doing this by hand and not with a box knife, even though it's tempting. It's easier to take it apart, take it off without scratching anything. Gooseneck tightener is just like any old typical bicycle one. Give it a couple turns to loosen it up. Thread this tensioner, the piece that binds against it. Once you tighten down that screw, it presses out and binds to the post. Yeah. Oh, sticker. Sticker that needs to be removed. Now would be a good time to check for chipping damage, hidden spots of rust maybe. Remove the packing tape that's stuck inside. Typical consumer device. I would opt to put an extra zip tie here to, to secure that wiring so that it doesn't flap around too much. That's just throwing a couple zip ties in with a fastener kit to do that. Uh, the rear, the rear nuts here on the stand, I've discovered that they uh, shipped them with them loose. There's a little keeper fastener on there, but you can't tighten it too tight, otherwise the stand doesn't want to pull up with the spring. So you may want to replace that with some Loctite blue, so it doesn't spin off. Or put a nylon locking nut on there. You can get those at your average hardware store. They're just an 8mm by 1.25 pitch nut. The shocks have a habit of rubbing against the plastic. We found that it's best to put a washer on the back side, an extra spacer washer included with the fastener kit, and one down below on each shock on each side. On the inner, 
and very carefully put those nuts back on. They tend to strip real easy if you uh, over wrench it too tight. You just need to compress the rubber on a little bit. And that's that's all. Maybe 20, 30 foot pounds. Loctite blue, blue is your friend. So there were some modifications that uh, we discovered as we were assembling the demonstration units as we went along. Well, I don't see any visible scratches, dents, dings, major major boo boos on it. So I'm gonna get the test light headlight assembly here. Well, a couple scuffs. A little touch up paint will fix that. You can use a plain gloss black rattle can from Walmart, works really good on this black. We do have small amounts of touch-up paint carried over from last year. Let's see. You need to zip a razor blade around the edge of this to remove the protective plastic when you're done. It goes all the way through to the inside, but I like to leave this on the inside because it acts as a waterproof gasket, basically. This rubber plug comes out where you can uh, tighten and adjust your handlebars. This blue plastic eventually wears off after a couple days in the sun, then you can peel it off. You don't have to use a knife and scratch the surface. There's your ignition switch, instrument cluster, six pin. So you just find the six pin connector. Oop, there's four pin. That's for the headlights. There's the six pin. Well, we'll just test the bike out real quick, make sure the motor works and everything's all kosher in that department temporarily. Just set it on there like that. Oh, we need to connect the ignition switch up. That's right. There's the ignition switch. Red and yellow. Where's the red and yellow plug? Two pin. Okay. There's red and yellow. And it's keyed so you can't plug it in backwards. Yes, there's plugs on here that are unused for cell phone alert. Where they can page you when the alarm goes off. Namely, it's that plug. That's uh, blue, purple stripe, blue, green, yellow stripe. Don't use it, don't need it. This is the headlight connector. You can see it's green, blue, orange, sky blue. And the other cables on the bike are, there's an electric brake switch. It actually tells the motor to cut off when you're braking. And you can see it's tied into the harness. There's a double plug for it. This is for the instrument cluster for this side for the headlights, turn signals, and horn. Let's see, and there the brake line switch goes around. And plugs in there. And there's one opposite for the other side. Right there. On some bikes, I have two connectors. One for each bike, one for each side of the brake handles. Go ahead and adjust and tighten the fastener nuts for the perch, making sure the cable doesn't come clear. Rear brake comes installed, but you may have to adjust it. Front brake does not come installed on the wheel, so underneath the packing wrap. There's all your brake hardware to attach to, to the front wheel. You take that nut off, there's a spring here, that comes off, the cable comes out, that goes in the wheel, the wheel goes on. I'll show you later. So now we have ignition, got a battery. We've been shipping them with the batteries installed, about 80% charged. And yes, we are We're charging the batteries as they sit and wait for, for sales. So you don't end up with any issues with the battery. Let me put it on there good. There. There, it's standard alarm fob with arm, disarm, panic. You could ride it. Fairly loud, piercing loud. So, just with the instrument cluster, I'm just telling the computer and the bike to turn on. It goes blue, has an indiglo 
type of effect, but when there's bright light, it just uses the regular black on gray. So it's already been driven two kilometers. Battery's mostly charged. Throttle works. And wheel needs a little bit of finesse, but it spins mostly straight. So, the bike's a runner, right out of the box. Now it's just a matter of hanging all the accessories on it. Put your key someplace. Don't excessively hang a lot of keys off the ignition switch, otherwise you'll end up with uh, replacing the switch early. Just set it aside for the time being. Clean up your mess. Reduces tripping hazards. <clears throat> Get it out of the way. Then you gotta put the bike on some kind of a stand. Uh, floor jack with a piece of plywood on top to support the bar underneath works good. Um, the bike only weighs about oh, 120, 130 pounds. So one person can pick it up easy, but I would observe the two man roll. But I'm here by myself today. Um, I use a milk crate or a heavy duty toolbox to lift the thing up and put it on. You just grab it by the triple tree and come right up. And you balance it so you can get the wheel installed. <clears throat> Here's your fasteners for your front wheel. Now would be a good time to check for basic alignment. Make sure the shock actually works. No fluid leaks, seals are good. Check the alignment of the bar. It seems to be pretty straightforward. It didn't get whacked around too hard or anything when shipping. Hold on to your fasteners. I'll put the wheel on later. Be sure to clean the inside of the wheel as they ship pack it with shipping grease just to uh, prevent it from resting while in storage but that will actually make the brake shoes slip so you need to clean it out so there's a good friction to fit once you tighten and adjust the brakes inside the basket here they zip tight it shut there's some extra goodies your charger the mirrors and the pedals fastener kit for the bikes will either be taped to the outside of the box or down in the bottom of the box in a double poly bag. Mirrors. Hey, we got mirrors. Good, good looking ones at that. Pedals to go on your cranks. Well, they're marked right and left. Righty tighty. Lefty tighty. The left one is reverse threaded, so when you spin it left, it tightens up on the crank and doesn't come loose while you roll down the road. First, another you know, first thing I usually do is get the charger out. Verify that yes, this is for a 60 volt, 12 amp hour battery. Okay, because these off look awfully similar between the 48 and the 60 volt. You do not want to confuse the two of them. So plug it in. Get the battery charging so by the time you're done assembling the bike you can go for a ride. This charger has a fan in it. It uh, does generate some heat so don't block the air vents. Don't put it near any flammable sources, gasoline, things like that. It is recommended by the manufacturer to plug the battery charger in first into the vehicle. Do not operate the key switch while it's charging. Then connect the AC. Do the opposite when you're done charging your bike. You disconnect the AC or wall outlet first, then the connector on the bike. Power, hey, an idiot light says it's working. Charge, it says red until, it turn, until it's finished and it goes green. And there is a fan that works in it, good. We'll just set that little guy there when I charge the bike up. What else we got here? Oh, a seat and a fender. 
on a bracket. I thought it was easier to put the battery bracket on first before you put the wheel on. Take the protective cardboard and whatnot off of it. The fender, <coughs> the fender bolts on here, here, and here. And there's supplied nuts to go with it and bolts. I like to nut the back side to make sure it's double nutted. It doesn't come off. Can't put the handle, can't put the mirrors on until you get the handlebar straight. And the rest of plastic on. The seat, pretty tough, rough and tough little seat. It's got nuts, bolts, and screws and staples. Just like a real motorcycle seat. With a foam liner underneath it. Pretty comfy. There are two tabs on the front of the seat. These tabs go underneath here to keep it from bouncing as you get on and off the bike. It fits rather tightly with that bar, so it holds the front of the seat together and makes it stay.